Hey, good people. Welcome back to Beauty and the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for another day of Frizzmas. I am so excited to finally be doing this video. I wish I had it up sooner, but y'all know how it is with time. So if you want to see a comparison between the Natasha Denona Retro Glam and Mel Thompson's bundle, her Retro Glam bundle with Sydney Grace, keep watching this video. Let me know what you think. And if makeup is your therapy and your love, if it makes you happy and you want to hang out with someone that feels the same way, definitely consider joining the community. I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. <laughs> So many of us have been waiting for Natasha Denona to come out with this palette. And finally, we have the Retro Glam Palette. A while back, she put out a mini retro, which was one of her five pants. And it was really cute. I don't have it anymore. It had a, a beige, a couple beiges, a couple pinks, and a green. Surprisingly, when she put out her mini retro, we were all kind of surprised because it didn't really go with the mini at all. So now we have Retro Glam, which I think is more in line with what we were looking for when it came to a midi retro palette. While we were waiting though, while we were waiting though, our beauty, Mel Thompson, came out with her own version of what a midi retro palette should look like. And she used her Sydney Grace singles to create a beautiful palette, which is this one. 20 shades versus the 15. And when Natasha Denona released this Retro Glam palette, Sydney Grace did put out the bundle that Mel created in her memory, which I think was such a fantastic idea. And some of the proceeds from those sales are gonna go to her family. So I was really happy to purchase this one, but I was also really curious to see how it compared. I loved seeing Mel's vision for this because you already knew it was gonna be on point. Like she was always on point, definitely ahead of her time. So I'm not surprised that Natasha Denona came out with something that was in line with that same vision. So I'm gonna show you the swatches of each palette, well the palette and then the bundle, and then I'm gonna do two looks with each. I wonder if you can tell which one I'm wearing right now. Am I wearing the bundle or am I wearing the palette? So here is a close up of the Natasha Denona Retro Glam Palette. As you can see, it has some pinks, it has some greens and it has some taupey and beige shades. It's a cool tone type of palette. It's a cool tone palette and there are a mix of the cream to powder mattes, her regular mattes, and then she has some shimmers. And this is her, I think it's $69 now. I don't know if it's $65 anymore, uh, the price for this palette. As of right now, if you're interested in this palette, Sephora is having a one-time 20% off. So you can grab this from there if you're interested. I believe the code is gifting. She did have this on sale for Black Friday, but it was only with 10% off. So I'm assuming this was her holiday palette. It's kind of blah, in my opinion. But a lot of people were waiting for this, I will say that. Here's a closer look at the Mel Thompson bundle with Sydney Grace, and as you can see, it's got 20 shades whereas the Natasha Denona has 15, and this palette is $60. This bundle is still available for purchase, but it is on back order, and you can use the code PUFFINSWIFE15, which is Mel Thompson's code, to purchase this bundle if you are still interested. I am not sure at this time when the, the back orders are going to ship out, but it is still available if you were interested or trying to you know choose between the two. So let's go ahead and get into the swatches. Let's start with the Natasha Denona, then we'll get into the Mel Thompson, and then I'll show you a picture of both palettes swatched out side by side. So looking at the Natasha Denona palette, I don't really have any complaints about it as far as being a bigger version of the retro palette or being called retro glam. I think the only thing that I don't like is that, and I'll talk about this in my final thoughts, some of the shades to me are very similar and they appear a little chalky in the swatches. So that's what I would say about that. I think the color story is okay. 
I do wish that there were a couple deeper shades. Now when you look at Mel's bundle, the first thing that I notice is that the swatches are just more vibrant. There's a lot more color payoff and you can see that the range is really there and you have depth there. I think that just looking at the swatches, this palette is gonna work for more people. I think some people probably skipped on the Natasha Denona palette just looking at the palette alone. This color story I think is definitely a masterpiece that she put together, especially putting something together that hadn't been created and then seeing what the real palette looks like. I mean, she was definitely on point as per usual with her vision. So I think these swatches are absolutely beautiful. All right, and now you're gonna see both of the palettes side by side. So you'll be able to see just how more vibrant the Sydney Grace bundle is and how more muted the Natasha Denona palette is. And after looking at it, I don't want you to think that I think that Vibrant is better. I think that because these shades are more pigmented, they're gonna work for more people, even the lightest of the shades in this palette. All right, you guys, with that being said, let's get into the demo. I'm gonna do two looks with each, the bundle and the palette, and then I'll be back at the end to give you my overall thoughts. All right, you guys, I'm so excited. I'm gonna be doing two looks with the Mel Thompson and Sydney Grace bundle. I have not swatched it yet, so I'm really just playing around but I already know it's gonna be good. Let me just tell you what's on my face because this is what I'm gonna have on for all of the looks. I'm wearing the Hourglass Ambient Foundation. I have on the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. I'm wearing the Tatcha Loose Powder. And then for bronzer, I'm wearing the Chanel Le Beige Sun Kiss Powder in Sun Kiss, which is the medium shade. For blush, I have on the Westman Atelier Blush in the shade Petal. And for lipstick, I'm wearing the Dior Velvet Lipstick in the shade New Touch. It's number 200. So that's what I'll have on in this video for all of the makeup looks. And for my eyeshadow primer, I'm wearing the Matte Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. Right, so I'm excited. I'm gonna start off using a Refer 27 brush. I think I wanna start off with the shade Honesty for the transition. So let's chit chat as I'm putting this on. How is the holiday season treating you all so far? I know that I have plans to decorate. This is Saturday, December 3rd. And I woke up, it was a rainy and dreary day. And now it's about five o'clock PM. It did get sunny, but the motivation has left me. And I'm still trying to locate some decorations. I'm not sure why, but I am sweating right here. I, the heat is not on. I had to turn it off because it, the weather is so weird here. Like it's kind of nice outside right now. I think it's probably in the sixties right now. So I, I don't know what's going on, but now I'm hot. I have the fan on. It's not helping. But yeah, let me know. Are you an early Christmas shopper? Because this is probably considered late, but it's early for me and I'm trying to get it together. Now just look at that. We were just chit-chatting, shooting the breeze. City Grace, I can't. Like, never, ever, ever fails. What do we want to do now? So I'm thinking, see, beyond is, yes, let's just go with the gut. Go with the gut. Beyond is calling me and I'm going to take a What's Up Beauty R105 brush and let's just put this on the outer corner and kind of swirl it over into the crease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so anyway, let me know, are you done Christmas shopping already? I'm not and you know, I'm trying to really figure it out for the boys because my dilemma is Marky doesn't play with toys. <laughs> he really just plays with his iPad. So trying to find something for him is tough. And then I end up wasting money every single year. And I'm not doing it this year. I don't think he would be upset if he didn't have to open a toy. I really plan on getting him a phone. So I probably need to go to the store and get that set up. Because I think in middle school, you, you need a phone. Damn, I honestly, in elementary school, you need a phone for real, for real, because we all know what's been going on in the schools. And like, I don't like the fact that my kids can't contact me 
throughout the day if there you know, were to be an emergency. And I hate having to think like that, but we, we have to think like that. I'm shaking my head at Sydney Grace because I am gonna be ranking eyeshadow formulas with my friend Jammy soon. And I can't wait to go through these again because last year Sydney Grace was my number one. And I'm curious to see, and I think Natasha was number two. And I wanna know if those are gonna be the same for me. Because this, like, what are we doing? You don't need anything else, this is perfect. Oh my God, I can't, I can. We need a shimmer. Why don't we just go peachy? Let's go with blushed. It's this one here. Gonna go with that on the finger. You just can't ask for anything else. It's like, why get anything else? Because I, you need little skill. Like, you don't need any skills for this. All right. Gonna go into Honeydew for the lower lash line. Little pop of color here on an Unearthly Cosmetics A7 brush. And I did not shop the Black Friday sale, but this is making me just wanna get online right now and just get something, I don't know what. I don't need to get anything because I just ordered the December bundle, so I'll have a video for that and the new year the new year's gala bundle so i don't need to order anything but this is so gorgeous like come on mm. Mm. and then for the inner corner oh wait wait let us go into green mist have a linda hallberg lip brush here it was a lip brush and we're just gonna Tap, tap, tap it in. And there's the first look. Like, for no reason. So beautiful. Now let's go ahead and get into look number two. I'm gonna be using the same brushes. So, hmm. let us go into, do we wanna do, mm, See, Bravo is quite grungy. Do want to go green? Let's let's start with Honeydew. So that's the same shade that I use on the lower lash line in the first look, and I'm not going to be able to use all of the shades. I'll have to come back and do something else with this because it's 20 shades. There's just no way I'm going to use all 20 in two looks. But this is going to be the perfect transition shade, and I. I think I do want to go into Bravo still, but just to go ahead and start the look, Honeydew is going to be perfect. Give us a nice base. Yeah, just like that. Might have went up a little higher than I wanted to, but that's okay. I think a lot of this is about to be covered up. We're going to go into Bravo now, which is a very grungy brown green and the, like the ease of how these blend is just crazy to me like they blend so easily and i really like green eyeshadow but i lean toward the grungy greens so like honeydew was a nice base but it is not my favorite type of green but bravo Yes. So we don't see too much of honeydew now. We we see a little bit peeking out of the top of the look, but we really don't see too much. So yeah, that's that's nice. I think for the shimmer shade, not I think, I know. Commission, which is a shade that I already own, but I, I didn't care about repurchasing it. And Cadet, I think I own Cadet too. Um, let's do Commission. Commission has like a gold tone. Oh, but you know what other shade is nice? 
this one. Let me see. Rover. Do I have Rover? You know what? Uh, okay, I got it. Let's start with Commission, which was that kind of greeny gold. Then we can go into Rover. And I mean, just the ease of how these shades apply and work with each other is really nice. And see, when I use shades like this, it lessens my tolerance for fussy shades because there are shades that I can use, but I have to do this or I have to do that. These, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to spray them. I don't have to wet them. I don't have to do anything. And I, it was always like that from the beginning. Gonna go into Rover here, and I just wanna see what it's gonna look like if I just add that to the outer portion of the lid. You're not gonna see it a lot. And I, I, I feel like with Mel's version, and I have not used the Natasha Denona, oh, I just made a mess. That was not Fallout, that was just me. But I, I don't know if the Natasha Denona palette will lend itself to as much variety because I'm seeing a lot of variety in, in Mel's version. I'm just not sure yet. So you can see a, a little bit of Rover right there. And if I wanted to, you know, I could use uh, Relax, you know, to kind of add more depth, more smoke. Beyond could do that as well. But I think I like what I've got going on here. I am going to take Relax for the lower lash line. So going back to that Unearthly Cosmetics brush, some of these shades, when you diffuse them out, they're gonna look similar. But depending on how you build them up, you'll be able to see the difference. And for the inner corner highlight, I'm gonna go into Green Mango, which I'm really excited to try. Same Linda Hallberg brush. This one is so pretty because it's green and has the gold reflex. So I love the name Green Mango. This would be a beautiful all over the lid shade as well. Yeah, I, I, I see a lot of possibilities with this palette. And I'm wondering if I'm gonna feel the same about Tasha. So here are both looks. All right, let's get liner and mascara, and I'll be right back to let you know what I'm thinking about both of these. All right, you guys, I am back with both finished looks. Let's zoom on in. And to finish off the look, I used the Urban Decay 24-7 liner in the shade Overdrive. Show you, it's just a green metallic liner. I've had it for a long time. And then I'm wearing the Charlotte Tilbury Push Up Lashes Mascara. And that's it. So what do I think about these looks? I really like both of them. Mm, if I had to choose a favorite, it would be this one. I, I like the green lower lash line. I think it adds like a touch of something different, but I much would rather uh, use the transition shade underneath the lower lash line or the shade that I use in the outer corner for the lower lash line. I tend to like more of the monochromatic um, looks, but I like this too, I think it looks nice. I like this one as well, but this is my favorite for sure. But I think they both look great. Cindy Grace ha has done no wrong ever. So as far as the performance, it is Cindy Grace. If you've tried the brand, it is, I mean, it's amazing. You cannot go wrong with this bundle if you choose to purchase this one over the Natasha Denona one. I'm gonna go ahead and say that right now. I know it's a bit premature because I haven't tried the Natasha Denona palette at this time. I mean, when you think about it, you've got shades handpicked by Mel Thompson, one. And then two is the Sydney Grace eyeshadow formula, so you can't go wrong. But we will see how we feel about the Natasha Denona palette and the looks and the formula. So let's go ahead and get into two looks from Retro Glam. All right, you guys, got a lot of natural light coming in from this way, but we're gonna go ahead and play now with the Natasha Denona Retro Glam palette. Let me get my ears. And again, I do have on the same face details from the first two looks. So let's get started. The first shade I'm gonna go to is the shade Bell. I'm gonna be using an MSQ blending brush for this. I might have to close these blinds just a tad, because this is looking really washed out. 
This is a really pretty transition color. This is a powdery shade. It's not like one of the cream to powders, but I do really like Natasha Denona's mattes. So this is performing as expected. Let me fix these blinds. Okay, so you can see the shade a lot better now. Now this is where uh, it gets tricky because there really isn't a lot of depth in this palette. So I'm trying to think about which shade I want to use. I would like to use like a, a deeper red or brown. And we do have this, which I really want to use this shade too. Maybe let's try using that. Let's see how it does with a brush. This is Flare. And this is pretty much giving me the same level of depth as the transition, you know, almost in a shimmer version. I mean, they do look around the same, like, I guess, level of, of pigment. So I was thinking flare, the shimmer was deeper, but it's looking about the same here. Mm -hmm. Next, I want to go into the shade. Let's do the shade Oz. I'm not sure if I like what I'm doing here, but we're gonna keep going with it. Just blend these two together. This may have looked better more as like a, a halo type look. Just gonna take this BH uh, Cosmetics angled brush. I'm trying to think of something for, let's go into Evergreen, which is this shade here. Now this is a cream to powder. Let's do that for the lower lash line. And then we need an inner corner highlight. I'm gonna take a pencil brush from the brand Ig Show. Let's go into Palladian, which is this one here. And there's look number one. Now let's get into look number two. I do wanna try out some of these uh, beige type shades. So we have Juicy. And we have Faye, and they're really, really similar. But I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Faye. So you might be able to see that Faye is a little bit deeper. This we'll see. This is a powder shade, traditional powder shade as well. Very cool toned. I think you can see it there. You can see it more than I thought you'd be able to. Well, this one isn't bad, I, but I, I don't know how flattering this is gonna look on everyone. This is not my favorite type of taupe. And then I wanna play with these browns. So we have Maxi and then Jazzy. These are kind of close too. I'm gonna go with Maxi. I'm gonna use a Blends Bunny Cosmetics B4 brush right into that shade. And then let's let's try Jazzy, the deeper one on the outer corner here, just to see if they look any different on the eyelid. Uh, I think they look pretty close, y'all. All right, and then in the center, I'm gonna use the shade Marlin with my finger. I do like the taupey shimmers though. The transition shade, I don't know if I like that as much, but I like the taupey shimmers. Those taupes have been like a really favorite of mine lately. Just wanna blend this out a little bit more. Oh no, I think I had something. Oh God, I had something on this brush. Hold on, I gotta fix that now. I'm gonna take a little bit of Fay and put it up in the brow bone area just cause I had something on that brush. I need to clean my brushes really bad. Here we go. And let's take Fay and put it on the lower lash line. For the inner corner highlight, I'm gonna go into Flutter. I'm gonna take Flutter on the same pencil brush from the first look. 
All right, and here's look number two with Retro Glam. So I'm gonna show you both looks again. All right, I'm gonna be putting the same liner and mascara back on and I'll be back to wrap up the video. So back with the final looks. Again, I have on the green Urban Decay metallic liner and then the Charlotte Tilbury push-up lashes. So I'm gonna tell you what I think about these two looks and then my overall thoughts. So I think both of these looks are okay. I think they look nice. Mm, if I had to choose, I actually think I like this one, the taupe with the green. I'm a little bit surprised because I was really excited about Flare, which was this shimmer, probably because it was like a standout when I look at the palette, but on the eye, I feel like it was just okay. But I love the, the taupe and the green shimmer together. I think that looks really nice. So I'm kind of surprised to say that this is my favorite out of the two looks, but I think these looks are just okay. They're not, they're not bad. I felt a little stumped with creating looks with this palette. I think I was missing some type of deeper shade, maybe a burgundy or I don't know, even this deep green, I don't feel like it was that deep. It looks deep, but it's it's not. So I, I'm just not sure what this palette is missing for me and I can't really place uh, my finger on it. So I think these looks are okay. So let's just get into the overall comparison because I, I do wanna talk a little more about this palette as well as the Sydney Grace bundle. Hands down, the Sydney Grace bundle wins for me. I could have totally skipped this palette and not looked back. The Sydney Grace palette offers a lot more with the shimmers and the mattes. Now, the Sydney Grace palette does have five more shades, but even though it does, you could take five of these shades out and still have more range, more depth, and more looks than the Natasha Denona palette. I just think Mel Thompson really put together something really beautiful here that still gives retro glam, but there's just a little more oomph to it. And, and that's what I like. You still have the taupey shades, you have like those sage green colors, but you have more depth in those shades. And I think that this bundle is gonna work for more people than the Retro Glam palette, <laughs> getting tongue tied. The shimmers to me have a lot more pigment and just a little more of a wow factor than the ones in the Natasha Denona palette. And Natasha Denona does make really nice shimmers, but I don't think these are my favorite colors by her. I also think that this Sydney Grace bundle has more of a warm feel to it. It's still cool, but these like peachy type shades just give a warmer feel. And because I don't love cool tones, this makes the bundle more wearable for me than the Natasha Denona palette. I would 100% recommend the Sydney Grace bundle over Retro Glam. Now, when we talk about Retro Glam, I don't think the quality of this palette is bad at all. I really don't. But one thing that I don't like about Retro Glam is that there are too many similarities and on the eye, like they look the same. Lucy and Faye, those were just too similar for me. Let's see. Sage and Image, they're different, but Fringe is not a shade that I'm probably gonna use too much. Maybe as a blend out or an inner corner highlight. Sage was a, a good transition, but I didn't need both of these. I also think these two shades are a bit similar. Uh, Jazzy and Maxi, they're not exactly the same, but I think they're close enough that you don't need them both in the palette. You know, for the price and then 15 shades, I don't really want any of them to be that close. We have Belle and Holly, let's see. these. Now these are pretty different. One is um, a lot lighter than the other. So I don't mind that as much, but yeah. I think this palette is, I think it's just mediocre. With that being said, and I no longer have the mini retro, to me, this is a midi retro palette. I think this is what many of us were looking for when she released the original midi retro. And 
we were really taken aback that that midi retro palette didn't have any greens in it. I just wish the greens just had more of a, a punch to it. And I'm missing that in this palette. I do think some people will really enjoy this palette if you like these cool tones, soft, green, springy looks. But the Cindy Grace palette, that really was all I needed. I could have totally skipped this one. Let me know your thoughts about these two palettes or the palette in the bundle. Let me know if you got both, if you got the Natasha Denona or if you got the Sydney Grace. Let me know which one you prefer and why. I'd love to continue this discussion down in the comments, but I've always said Sydney Grace has one. Well, Sydney Grace and Natasha Denona, they, they both have eyeshadow formulas that are in my top five. So, you know, I think this really comes down to the pigmentation, the depth, and like the feel of the palette. What kind of looks do you like to create? And I, I feel like with the, retro glam it's a bit limited and you might want to reach for another palette to add a little more smokiness and maybe the retro glam palette wasn't designed to create really smoky looks you know what i mean that might not have been the vision and again i don't think these looks look bad i just really like what mel thompson visualized for her version of the retro glam better i just i love that you can create the smoky looks i like that you can create the peachy looks and the taupey sage green looks and I, I just really like it a lot better so that is my comparison of the two let me know what you think and i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here thank you so much for taking out some of your time and hanging out with me for another day of frismas i hope this was therapy for you it always is for me until i see you again make sure you are being gentle with yourself talk to yourself nice stay safe and i will see y'all tomorrow bye